What do we do when we have a wire antenna that teases us with tuner-free access to 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40 meters with 63 feet of wire, and 80 meters with a 67-foot extension? <laughs> but in my particular case, I've got a lot that's only 115 feet long. Is there anything I can do to make this work for me. Well, that's what we're going to try out today and see if we can do some crazy things with this. And if I don't do any significant damage to the SWR or the dependability, reliability, usability of this antenna, just think what you could do if you could get it up in free space. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, amateur radio call sign Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf HOA Ham. I live in a home that's governed by a homeowners association. I do have a portamast in my backyard and I'm going to attach this to my portamast. Now, my portamast is, oh, let me show you right where my portamast is. My portamast is in the backyard, mm, approximately right here in this location. It flies a flag and uh, that's how I access it and use it in the HOA and um, kind of get my wire antenna up there and I'm able to keep it flying. So what I wanna do is see if I can do a sloping L and slope my wire in this direction and go down my side yard. So I still don't know if that's going to give me the space that I need for 130 feet. I might have to do something as crazy as even turn this back on itself. You don't wanna be turning antennas back on themselves. So I'm going to do this only if absolutely necessary, but I wanna get this up here in the HOA and give this a try. This is a, an antenna system that has a very good reputation for performance. And when you can get a wire antenna up and be resonant on that many bands, wow. Add 80 meters to it and double wow. Before we go backyard portable, let's get a look at the contents of the LEFS 8010 so that before we go and operate and set this up, we can kind of pre-plan it how I'm going to go about doing this. It is a very straightforward and simple setup. Other than making the plate for the top of my port mass, this should go pretty quick. So this is the 67 foot section that allows us to get on 80 meters. It has a connector and then attached to the matching unit is the 63 foot section of wire. This is what lets us get on 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40 resonant. And then we connect the two wires together to jump up to 80. I'm going to fly the matching unit on top of my portamast. You can put this low to ground, but Chameleon does recommend flying it elevated. It'll work both ways. It does have an elastic wrap that lets us attach our wire uh, post deployment for storage and for putting it in our backpack or, or however you wanna take your antenna with you out into the field. We're left with two winders as well as some power cord. I have a 20 foot portamast. It's 20 feet out of the ground, meaning it's in the concrete sleeve in the ground, but there's 20 feet elevated on top of the portamast. I've installed the topper accessory, which has a female 3 8 by 24 thread. And I'm going to uh, attach this plate to the top of it. I've been wanting to do this some time, so I purchased some stainless and I'm just gonna drill three holes in it. That way I can orient it however I need to through any one of the three holes on top of the portamast. And in this particular case, I'm gonna go through the center hole and then attach my matching unit on the LEFS8010 to one of the outside holes. I'm doing this because I wanna get some separation between my portamast and my coax, and I wanna get the wire away from it. The wire will be sloping away, but still I wanna get about six inches of distance between the antenna and my portamast, and that's why I'm doing this. I'll put this on my portamast as needed for any particular antenna tests, and I wanted it specifically for this setup. I wonder how the XYL would feel about an investment in a machining center. If you're not familiar with my opinion of my portamast, then you're obviously just new to the channel. It is a robust mast that comes down in seconds. I can actually yank it out of that concrete sleeve 
and take it portable anytime I want. You saw me grab my wire antenna that is always attached to it. It's about 30 feet long, goes back to the corner of my house in the right hand side of this picture. I'm just going to quickly fit this top plate on here and then we're going to get the antenna installed. It was fairly late in the day when I started the process. I only intended to get my top plate drilled out with the three holes, but we made it far enough along that I was able to clip the matching unit to that plate and start to spread out my wire. I'm losing daylight quickly, but at this point I'm determined to get the port mass completely raised and get this antenna wire spread out in whatever configuration I can so I can run some tests this evening. At this point in time, I'm spreading the first 63 foot length of wire all the way over to a tree that's on the property line, the side line of my house. I'm going to string this wire through the tree. And well, I'm gonna show you the rest of this tomorrow because I just lose too much daylight to give you a good look at it. And here we are next day. Here is my port mast completely raised up to 20 feet. There's my plate on top of the topper and you can see my wire going to the left towards that tree that I was fishing it through last night and yep here we come up to that tree pretty quickly uh, we go through that tree and I get about three to four feet through that tree and that's where we connect the second wire that is the 67 foot long wire and that 67 foot long wire goes at my head height down through this palm tree and once we go through this palm tree, we make another slight left-hand turn and head almost all the way out to the road in the front of the yard. It's finally completely installed. I finished it last night. You get your look at it now, just like Chameleon Antenna drew it up. <laughs> Not quite. The original line here was to, you know, make a couple of turns in blue. And in reality, what you saw there in the orange is what the final configuration ended up being. Let's go ahead and get our signal run into my SDR, open SDR Uno, see what the waterfall looks like, as well as hear the quality of the signals coming through on 40 and 80. That's what I'm most interested in listening to this evening. We're going to have ice tonight, which is not good. Uh, and like the one gentleman said, uh, these people can't even drive. Yankee, Yankee. Good evening, Roy, and to the net. This is Kilo Delta 5, Julian. We have a pretty good looking waterfall, and the signals are coming through fairly strong. Doesn't necessarily mean we have a good antenna yet. Let's check SWR and then we'll actually attempt to make some contacts. So if you look at the user's guide from Chameleon on the LEFS 8010, this is what the SWR should look like. And here is our actual SWR that I measured going across the 80 meter through 10 meter band. And I'm now going to put the individual charts up. So if you're interested in them, you'll just have to pause the video and check the SWR for yourself. It's good in all cases. Next up, we're going to try to make some contacts. The easiest thing to do here is to either start chasing POTA, which uh, this late in the evening, I don't have anybody that's operating on 80 meters or 40 meters, which is unusual. There's almost always somebody to chase on 40 meters this time of day, but not today. So we're going to log on to the OMIS net on 80 meters and see what we can pull off. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf 13,000 130,000. I got 130,000, and there was two other stations with a perfect double. Those of you who know the OMIS net or any net where net control calls for general check ins, it's a free for all. It's a pile up. I shouldn't have been able to do that with my small lot sloping L LEFS 8010 in the configuration that I have it in my yard. But here I ended up in slot nine, making it in right as general call ins were being taken. I think by the time the net was done, there were about 30 people who joined the net. So net control heard me. Did I actually make any other contacts? This is uh, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike off, going up to road 2, Kilo India 5, United, Papa, Papa. Any copy on Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf? Uh, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf, this is KI5, UPP, I'd say I got you 5-7, my way. 
QSL the 57, I have you 59. Roger, Roger. Copy the 59. Thank you for calling me. Appreciate you being there. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf, back to net. One good call. KD4, BMG, any copy on Victor Echo 3, Kilo Uniform Zulu. Kilo Echo 3, Kilo, uh, Victor Echo 3, Kilo Uniform Zulu. This is Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. I have you 5757, over. Roger on the 5-5. Five five. Before I jumped on the Omis net, I did some FT8 on 40 and 80 meters. I only spent like five to 10 minutes on each of the two bands calling CQ as well as responding to others calling CQ. And you can tell from PSK reporter on both bands that I was being heard as well as hearing. I don't actually demonstrate me doing the FT8. That doesn't seem like that would be very exciting for you to watch. I do want you to see that I did set up my whisper transmitter because I'm going to run this for 24 hours straight. I do want to be able to pick up all the other bands, the higher bands that I wasn't able to work this evening just due to propagation and time of day. Once I do receive my position lock on GPS and the clock actually turns over to an even number, you can see that my transmitter begins to output. And this is just going to crank away from band to band to band for the next 24 hours to give us these wonderful whisper maps. And here you can see the whisper map on all bands is awfully impressive. I'm going to go ahead and start at 10 and just simply go from each band that is a resonant band on this LEFS 8010. So we're going to do 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 40, and 80. And I'm going to say the 80 meter map here. Uh, I said this a couple of days ago, I think when I put together the SS25 and the Mad Dog Coils a uh, big dog. I, I'm not exactly sure what he's calling it. I forget because that video was a couple of weeks ago. I think that was the best whisper map on 80 I had ever up to this point in time. And I think this one, if I recall correctly, beats it out. Best 80 meter whisper map that I've had on any antenna system. So do you have any idea what I think about this small lot sloping L non-tuner dependent antenna resonant on 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10? Uh, I think it should be pretty obvious what I think about it because it performs incredibly well and it's typical chameleon quality right down to the wire, the 20 gauge PTFE uh, copper clad uh, Kevlar threaded wire. This stuff is incredibly durable and strong. If you're looking for a broad banded antenna, you don't want to take a tuner with you. You're going out on a POTA activation. You're traveling. You want to get across many bands with 60 some uh, feet. You can get on all of those bands, but 80 add on another 60 and change about up to 125 feet and you have an antenna that's resonant all the way up to 80. Absolutely good gear. Hope you found this useful and that the statistics and tests, you know, are good for you to make your decision about the type of gear you want to invest in and use in your ham way of life. Talk to you soon, friends. 73.